Hmm. Yeah. Yes, I have fish. <laughs> I thought you'd seen them, Sean. I don't think so. Then it must be have it must have been too long since you were last here to visit. <laughs> yeah. Because I remember it was like two, three years ago that I got them. Um, it's been like five years, I think, since we've seen each other. Good grief! That's not that's not right. <laughs> that needs to be fixed. Because yeah, yeah. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys uh, know each other online first? Yep. Yep. We've I've known D &D? She, well actually more uh, Akea muds and such. We met. Right. 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 Yeah. I mean, gosh, when was it we met? Two thousand ten, two thousand nine. So we're going on eleven years. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Nice. Which is crazy. Mm hmm. When I join a like a group or something, I've been going for a long time. It's always a bit like, like when you realize <laughs> your parents were young once. Uh -huh. it's like, uh -huh. <laughs> oh, wait, you guys didn't do Dungeon World forever before I came. <laughs> What's mud? <laughs> right. <laughs> I hear you there. What's really weird is now, I think. Oh yeah, remember the two thousand babies. <laughs> They're all getting married now uh, and having their own kids. And I'm like, uh, oh, I know, right? <laughs> I recently watched a, um, what's the guy's name? Vsauce. Michael, whatever his name is from Vsauce. Mm -hmm. so Michael here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Up, up, yeah. Up, up, yeah. Up. Right. He, he, was, he recently put out a video, which is like our perception of time. It's just uh -huh. so messed up because we base everything off of what we ourselves have experienced and we can't really fathom what our parents experienced or what our grandparents experienced. And it was just like, oh yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure. I, I love, uh, that, that's a, that's a, uh, like almost a weird fetish of mine is like, I love things that, uh, uh, like, uh, immortality and, time fuckery mm -hmm. and like movies and stuff right um like palm springs was a big one mm. uh really loved that perspective on the groundhog day <laughs> format yeah like i heard harriet tubman was alive both in the both um both in the jefferson administration and the reagan administration she was born when Thomas well, Jefferson was in office, and she died when Ronald Reagan was in office. <laughs> Which is like, dang, that seems like a full century, but it really isn't. <laughs> I, I I heard I heard something that really blew my my mind. Um, Martin Luther King and and Frank were both alive at the same time, hmm. like. You don't yeah. think about it because you talk about the two cases completely differently. Yeah. But I, I watched um uh, I watched uh a Star Trek the motion picture recently. Oh boy. Um yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's very pretty. It's uh, yeah, yeah, it's but <laughs> I, I love that one. I'll watch that one over like, and over. I, I like it. I don't know, I have a short attention span. It's very slow, but it, but it is it is fascinating. Um, yeah, um, I'm excited to watch Wrath of Khan. Oh yeah, that I've seen it before, but it's been a really long. That is my favorite of all of them, mm -hmm. mostly because I mean, it just has so many lines, so many like ah, spine yeah. spine chilling lines too. Right. Um, but but uh, oh, what was I gonna say about Star Trek: The Motion Picture? What did you just say a second ago? It prompted me to mention. It's something about the passage of time, where like Martin Luther King uh, was alive when Anne Frank was alive. Uh, oh yeah, 
I didn't realize, like, yeah, I, I think, I think it, uh, um, it wasn't when I was watching the movie, but when I was uh, listening to a podcast talking about it later, they mentioned that Scotty was, was like a teenager in the Great Depression. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, because I, I actually genuinely didn't know the timeline of like the original Star Trek series and the movies, which didn't happen until a long time after the show was canceled in like relative obscurity. <laughs> hmm. And then they're already kind of all old when they come back for the first movie. <laughs> right, right. The cool part of uh, Scotty himself was that they actually scattered his ashes in outer space, I believe. When he died in the yeah, you know what? Uh, they James Doohan. I think they scattered his ashes in outer space, like they took it up to the ISS oh, wow. or to Mir or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he got quite the uh, quite the funeral or whatever yeah. memorial. Quite the send off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Gene Roddenberry treatment. All right, got my neighbor kid coming to pick up his junker van from across the cul-de-sac. Uh -huh. My God. Or maybe he's complaining about this van that's sitting outside my house. Who knows? Nope. I, you didn't hear the explanation. So uh, as always, I'm eating. I am going to start doing this. <laughs> For once, it's not my fault. <laughs> 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 Not a problem. Um, but but since I don't actually have to do anything for this uh, with my hands, uh, tell me about your characters. Whoever whoever wants to go for, or or together, because you're kind of know each other. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, last night, I was fixing my coworker's computer, and while I was sitting there, I was showing him around my character sheet just because he's marginally mm -hmm. interested in this sort of thing um and i yeah. decided i'd test out the that automatic rolling and yeah i can't mm -hmm. i can't figure out what correlates um <laughs> uh basically a contested role versus just a straight up percent percentile role on that character mm -hmm. sheet i i, mm -hmm. I Oh, is it contested? Is it? Oh, oh, okay. Contested by just the base skill. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but um, Daniel, it looks like you got um, you got your uh track to actually switch from. <sighs> yeah, I did, but I don't know how. I went into the settings tab and found a bunch of the different like roll types where it will roll three times and show all three results. And then when I switched back oh. to standard, whatever it's called, uh, hang on, I'm gonna pull it up. Oh. I switched back right. to the um, query compressed or no, is that it? No, I don't think that's the right roll type no bonus penalty dice or something like that. Or I just started flipping okay. around to those different role options. And okay. for whatever reason, it decided to start doing contested roles against the base skill. Great. But at the same um, time, I don't know why it switched because a bunch of others were still stuck. Right. That, that one I had... Uh, track I had actually checked on as one that I was proficient in, switched over, mm -hmm. switched back, and it started working. But I've since turned it back off. So, mm -hmm. Because obviously that's not part of my I mean, character sheet. At least, a, this, at least this won't be like a problem in game. I feel like this is... Uh, 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 it would be more of a problem in D&D &D where the DC is variable and either set by me or... A fucking calculation that you have to do. Right. You really need the reference there for the DC, but this one it's like if you went and clicked the skill, you can see 
Right. The number you have to be right there. Right, but like if we're if we're whispering to you the role, mm. then we have to tell you whether it succeeded or failed based on. Oh, that is annoying, isn't it? <sighs> and the um the the randomness of it is what gets me because <laughs> it's not every skill it's not like every other skill it's you're in the mindset of an investigator <laughs> secret. but what you don't know is that the the, the true you, should, you need to get out now mm -hmm. the more you learn the, the the you're already losing sanity points going down this rabbit hole oh that's meta <laughs> Oh, All right, so our characters knew each other as kids. Um, Daniel, I forget what town you're from. So which town did you say your character was from? Um, I am from... One sec. I am from a town outside of Chicago called Dunkirk. Dunkirk. Yes. Okay. Okay. This is the professor? Yeah. That would be Daniel's cut. Mm -hmm. All right, a professor of archaeology. Nice. And what brings to Boston. Fred, do you live here? Do you live in Boston? No, actually, I live in Chicago and work at the university there. Uh, hmm. However, I believe Sean and I kind of, uh, Sean came up with an interesting idea, and that was him and I could be childhood friends. Hmm. And we have always had this kind of fascination with challenging each other, kind of school schoolboy dares and stuff like that oh yes so when we both thought of <clears throat> heard of this haunted house in boston yeah. where he lives he was like hey yeah. steve come on over we're gonna check out this haunted house and i'm like "Ooh, uh-huh i like that a lot yeah i mean it's it's definitely it's and so my character is uh an archaeologist uh, archaeologist um at the moment i think i live in boston but i grew up in dunkirk along with um stephen yes and um unlike stephen i'm i'm a staunch um denier of uh anything supernatural Mm -hmm. or, um, you know, metaphysical. If I can take a picture of it, it I'll believe it exists. But other than that, I'm not uh, not believing in ghosts or the supernatural or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So my dare with Stephen is that we'll go to the haunted house and, you know, if we can say there's anything actually supernatural going on, I'll give you, you know, ten dollars or twenty dollars or whatever would be an amount of money in nineteen twenty times. I believe twenty dollars is a lot. Five dollars. Ten dollars. That might still be like a car or something. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know what is money, but it's. Let's say ten. Let's say ten dollars. Um, according to my sheet calculations, uh, I have eighty dollars in cash. So ten dollars is not breaking the bank. Twenty dollars may be a bit much, but mm. uh, one dollar in nineteen twenty is equivalent to uh, the purchasing power of about thirteen dollars today. Hmm. Okay, so 120 some dollars, yeah. Yeah, according to this, 
you had me at a spending level of fifty dollars and a cash just cash on hand is two hundred and fifty dollars I'm not sure what that means because <laughs> this was one area I just didn't touch at all um, yeah but yeah. I'm like as far as like just basic stuff that I have I'm almost thinking just like antique pistol inherited from my father who has passed away and if we're if we're in Boston eh, if we're in Boston we'd probably be taking taxis everywhere if right. they exist but I was thinking a rental model a car or something like that <laughs> just so we could make use now, of our driving <clears throat> skill yeah um, let me see. I don't think, don't, I'm trying to remember, I don't think we necessarily keep track of exactly how much money you have. There's, there should be like a credit rating. Yeah, so, there's a I credit exactly rating. How it works. Yeah. Credit, credit something, yeah. Okay, it has, oh, fuck it. It has actual, like, Oh, it has no. both. It has the credit rating and then in the possessions tab. Oh, I see. Okay. So, um, did you did you figure out your credit rating? How like how the book wants you to? Because yeah. we can go through it now if you haven't. Like, yeah, it was just basically like you get these um, base skill ratings of like 40, 40, 40, 50, 50, 50, 50 60, 60, 70, 80, right. or and something like that. And you just say, here's the eight skills that my profession gives me, plus credit rating, assign all nine of these numbers to those right. randomly. Right. And then pick up and four more the... hobbies and add 20 to those. To base mm -hmm. okay. so. all right. I'm actually going to start looking at your sheets now. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, Okay, so you're both professors. Um, oh, of archaeology. Yes, I see. I like this a lot. Um, oh, I was wondering why the two sheets looked different, because one of them is in edit mode. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I can turn that off if you want. Oh, it doesn't matter. Um, all right. I'm, I'm partly looking at it to familiarize myself with how the sheet. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're a sturdy fella, April Fourth. Oh yes, I, I've been working out in uh, in all the ruins and you know uh, mm -hmm. hiking through forests and so forth. So. Okay, so you're you're sort of a field researcher. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm more of a library kind of guy I'd rather do the research than go out into the field not quite indiana jones here which is interesting because in you you seem to be well no it is more it is aberforth that's that's inviting you to this uh sort of thrill seeking you know slash Intellectual. Uh, uh, yeah, haunted house run. Mm -hmm. Switch back and add. So for Aberforth's uh, skill set, I kind of picked things that make sense for uh, archaeology, um, archaeology, anthropology, um, mm -hmm. uh, mechanical repair in case the, the car or truck breaks down, natural world. Um, mm -hmm. And then as kind of hobbies, um, I kind of thought that Aberforth would sort of be maybe uh, peddling the occasional um, archaeology item on the side. So, mm -hmm. uh, brawling, law, uh, first aid, use, and persuade for getting into scrapes and kind of moving items through the 
the law systems or getting it into port where maybe it shouldn't be. Okay, so you probably do a lot of traveling. I, I imagine so, yeah. Although no actual skill in nav navigation, but yeah, you I mean, just... unless you <clears throat> specialize in like uh, Native American sort of archaeology, uh, I imagine you uh, do most of your archaeology outside the country. I, I think so. Yeah. You take the newfangled aeroplanes everywhere. I'm trying to think where would be a sort of semi-high conflict center of archaeological research in 1920. Ooh. Egypt is pretty cutthroat, right? In terms of archaeology. I would think uh, so, yeah. 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 Especially in that period where they're <laughs> digging up Tutankhamun and finding out that <laughs> most right. of the graves around there are already robbed out, stripped And then, of course, we're in the era of Darwin, where he's hmm. coming up with evolution, the theory of evolution and that kind of thing. Oh, damn, right. And going up against all the... This is going to be... This, is, this whole thing is going to be an exercise in the passage of time. <laughs> the things that happened at the same time you didn't realize. Uh... What about you, uh, Stephen? What uh, what skills did you pick? Or uh, if you, if you don't want to go into that, you don't have to. It's yeah. it's not really. I'm I, I mostly pick them for the reason of eh, it just seems kind of diverse. Mm. Um, Russia, the ones that make sense, that kind of thing. Like Russian. Yeah. Well. That one's jumped out to me. Wait, tell me about that. The IRL player took Russian in high school. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, 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 right. So that's I what don't that's know what. that in 1920s you would learn Russian in high school. Uh, right. Um, um, I'm not like, I'm not I, trying to correct you. I'm just, I'm just trying to find, like, is there an interesting story? Well, okay. Backstory wise, backstory wise. My father died when I was a kid, um, hmm. and I inherited a bunch of stuff, but I also w w went to live with, like, my great aunt in hmm. this creepy haunted house in Chicago, or in Dunkirk, rather, where I grew up. So um, I could I could imagine Herbie having some Russian ties, just yep. sort of a immigrant um, of the old country. What's going on in Russia? <laughs> the entire, the entire um, revolution is going on. Oh, well, that makes sense then. So, either she came with the whole um, Jewish exile from Russia, or she is just <laughs> one of the peasants or one of the aristocrats or something like that. I would actually say aristocrat. Where the peasants took over okay. from communism or instituted communism, uh, and yeah, and that, that would partly, probably, uh, you know, despite the the uh, setback of your parents, you still sort of would have had a somewhat privileged uh, upbringing in terms of you know getting in, right? Uh, academic, yeah. <coughs> Where's credit rating? Credit rating is in the skills. Hmm. Oh, skills. Oh. All right. Oh, yeah, I see. 50. 40 for eight. But if you're only sort of, I could see an, 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 uh, an older woman from a, a foreign country maybe isn't quite the most stable um, 
uh, would where the opposite of dependent is. Um, so that would make sense to go on like like a seventy or eighty credit rating. Yeah. Well, same time, it's like um, <laughs> somewhat orphaned. Not quite a Harry Potter level orphaned, where my in-laws don't even want me, or my extended family doesn't even want me. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, I'm not really the. I myself am not the most privileged, even though she might be completely wealthy and well-to-do. Hmm. I'm making some notes like they told me to. A little dice box, Sean. Oh, what? I made myself a little dice box, sort of oh, like you've got. Nice. It's not quite done, but it was like after the first, uh, after the first call like two weeks ago, I was like, ah, I can't keep rolling on the couch if I want to use physical dice. So I went downstairs and found a bunch of plywood and just glued it together. That's cool. I mean, I, I made a dice box once, but I made it literally out of a tissue box. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, then I took it to work and sanded it up and spray painted it black. So it's not quite done in that I want to decorate it a little nicer, but yeah, put in a felt bottom. Anyway. I'm gonna jump up and find my phone real quick. I keep my dice in an old uh, Altoids tin. <laughs> I got into getting uh, a lot of dice. Because I would like, I was for a while I was running a lot of in-person games with people that I hadn't played before, and so I, I was like, like, if it seemed like they had a really good time and they wanted to do more, I would like, I would just like give them a little bag of dice. Mm hmm. That's nice. Yeah, uh, but then they 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 started adding up, uh, and I've got a lot of dice now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and obviously, right now there's nothing to do. It. Um, oh, I did this really fun. I, I was really proud of this. I wish I wish I could do it more. Uh, eventually, I'll probably do it again. Um, I'll probably play Dungeon World again sometime. But uh, <clears throat> I was running Dungeon World a lot for various people. Because I was really excited about the system, and it was like a really easy one to jump into, play with, you know, without anybody knowing how it worked. Mm -hmm. It's like easy to learn on the fly as you play. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so what I would do is, I would have. It, obviously, this doesn't work right now. It probably won't work for a, a while. But I had to just like, <clears throat> I had hold out my hand. And I had a bunch of dice in it. I had like a red D10 and a, a, a red and black D8 and a, a bright purple D4 uh, and like a, a gold blue, a, a gold D6, you know? I, was just, I just have these various dice. Each one was like a different shape and color. There were a couple duplicates in shape, but each one was a different color. Um, and I would hold it out to everyone and say, like, pick a dice. Pick a die. Pick a die. <laughs> and each one of those corresponded to, uh, you know, a class. Because Dungeon World has those lovely two-page character sheets. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> cool. 
Yeah, and cause, and each class also has a damage die, so they they would have that as their damage die, and I would then I would after they pick that I would hold out a bowl full of d uh, d sixes uh, and say take two, and they would take two d sixes and that's all the dice they needed for the whole thing. That's cool. Because I'm pretty sure like all the wizard spells either roll d sixes or d fours. Mm hmm. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was really proud of that. Uh, it only worked if I like, you know, if it was a one shot, and uh, I sort of mentioned that like, you know, the stakes are pretty low here. You're not gonna fully get to pick your characters. Um, you know, I would I would sort of mention that the level of control that they had over their characters is gonna be mm -hmm. limited yeah. in some way. But I wouldn't tell them that they were picking their character when they were uh, taking a die. Right. That's cool. Yeah, I only again I only got to do it once, but uh, I uh, hope to do it more. It only really works in Dungeon World because I have the excuse of like, it's the damage die you'll get to use it. Yeah, I could do it in D and D, but it would still be your. You still need at least a D20 and a D... You, you, need, you need more die for, for... Oh, what do you need a D20 for? For Dungeon World? No, not, not for Dungeon World, but for Dungeon oh, right, Dragons. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, also, it, I would just be arbitrarily picking what die. I guess I, I, guess I could hand them a D20. Cool. It'd just be a, a fistful of D20. Mm -hmm. All right, what does it actually want me to write down? I'm just supposed to keep track of a couple attributes and information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the book is really interesting. Very, it's handholdy in a good way, I think. This, uh, the way this adventure is written, hmm. lots of sidebars about like, make sure to note down your your player characters uh, or the you know, the player's uh, appearance and credit rating, blah blah blah, and then it'll have a handout for the players. It's like, just a little bit pushy in terms of like. You know, you may want to research it, but blah, 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 you know, you'll see. Because I think I'm going to use the handouts as they are, even though some of them are a little, very slightly condescending. Okay. <laughs> I think it's ultimately good for mm -hmm. what, we're, what we're doing. Do we need to start with any, like, scars or... Um... No. Okay. No. That that's just backstory stuff. Okay. Right. Um, yeah, like, like as much backstory as you think, you know, as you feel like is uh, appropriate. Like do a little, but like, mm -hmm. you know, don't go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, like I said before, like some bullet points would be great. Sure. Um, we don't actually need to write anything. I'm not saying you shouldn't write anything if, if, if the spirit moves you, but like. You know. <laughs> I don't know that it would be quite as helpful. I don't know that I would do it Call of Cthulhu because they're like normal humans growing up in America. But uh, <clears throat> one thing I almost universally do for characters that I'm playing for like a campaign or something, not a one-shot, but 
you know, if I'm even slightly committing to a character, I will map out. I think I mentioned this. It's a very like. I mean, it's because I liked the Silmarillion and all that and Lord of the Rings and shit. But like, I, I do map out a family tree. Oh. Um, I don't do a lot of backstory stuff, but I always find that so inspiring. Sure. Like one of the. <laughs> Uh, my first character that I ever made, Kate the Bell, uh, Human Ranger. Uh, so it was in a group of two. Uh, we were just like a ranger and a rogue. Uh, uh, they like ran away uh, from town uh, to go on an adventure. It was fun. Uh, and I've reused the character a couple times, but always like very different. And. The most recent incarnation and the one that sort of inspired me the most since the first was I made a, uh, I guess the closest comparison would be Jin Nasi, but it was a homebrew. It was like very specific to the world. Um, uh, uh, Ranger. Um, and I mapped out the same family tree sort of, as the original character. The original character, I did a family trick. It was my first D&D character, and I gave her, like, I gave her parents' names, I gave the, uh, I, I can't remember the, I'll find it, I'll find it, I'll find it. I know this is totally unrelated, but I, I, now I'm, now I'm, uh, uh, yes. I, don't know. I found the original note my Google Drive. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's not a family tree so much as it's a family list of, like, the immediate nuclear family. Hmm. But, uh, I guess that's usually what I do. Um, but, uh, yes. Uh, Francis and Catherine were the parents. Francis Jr., obviously, uh, was older brother and then my character, and then Julianne, a younger sister. And for the, the more recent character, Sidna, who was just sort of vaguely inspired because I, I used the same sort of family to kind of uh, find it. I get more scatterbrained when I'm tired, too, so that's probably for the... <laughs> Yeah, so I... Sort of the same archetypes for the family. The, the, the older parents that, like, had kids when they were older. Uh, and, uh, like, a accomplished older brother that made the family proud and then a sister that's just very young except this this character is a half elf mm. so I got to make things weird <laughs> so I, the the mother is a 500 600 700 you know nobody really knows for sure you're a old elf just an ancient elf uh, and the character's dad is a 100-year-old half-elf. Oh. But this is not her first husband. Her first husband was an elf, like, 130 years ago, mm -mm. who died, like, hunting on a glacier with their oldest son. So she had a family like 200 years ago. And since then, the whole like culture has moved downriver from the glacier. Cause I decided that like in that culture, like when, a, when an elf dies, it's a big deal and they move. Like they build a mound and then they move cause this doesn't happen that often. Uh, but, uh, and they're nomadic anyway. But uh, yeah, so I, I 
that's why like making building out the family always like gets gets thinking because in D and D you can get really weird with it, where you can have someone who's six hundred year years old who had a family two hundred years ago and mm-hmm. now has married a one hundred year old and they're kind of the same age because D and D right. And you, you just hear about this, like, <laughs> your half-brother who died 200 years ago. <laughs> but your mother remembers him. Yeah. All right. You say family tree inspires you. I just came up with a very, very quick one with for Stephen. <laughs> okay. His mother was named Olga Vasilieva. And her sister was named Cassinia, and that was the aunt that whose house he stayed in. <clears throat> so cool. Stephen Delaney lived in Cassinia Vasilieva's mansion in Dunkirk, Illinois. Uh, is this written on your sheet? Uh, not yet. It's written on a sheet. Okay. okay. <laughs> Just, uh, I can copy it if I want. Because I am not going to remember that. Now, there's really no place to, except for the bio and well, info. There's a backstory tab, but it's pretty crowded right now. Yeah, and it's more... Yeah. Well, I mean, you can put those people under significant people, I suppose. I'm thinking more well, in the there, bio info room? tab. I can do it in the main Roll20 bio. Oh. Yeah, Because that actually, I think, even lets me put in pictures, if I'm not mistaken. Really? No, no links. Links only. Links and tables. Yeah, I can make it work. So one, one, two. Uh, no, you, you don't need to do this, uh, John. <laughs> 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 I, I, felt, I know that's not what you meant it as, but that sigh, I felt like, ah, I kind of need a fucking family tree. Who's... Aber Fort's second <laughs> No, this is going to be a little confusing. I'm not going to do it this way, and I'm not going to really worry about it at the moment. Right, I'm going to try to not go on. I'm in this weird state of tiredness where, like, don't really feel tired, but I'm extremely aware of how tired I am because, like, I you know really focus on. Uh, speaking of getting distracted, um, do you, uh, I feel like I've asked this before. Do you guys play anything on like Steam or Switch? That's that's mostly where I do. Yes. Games. I have all of my Steam stuff. That's my that's my main repository. Your your mic is cutting out a lot. Is it? Oh, good grief! Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Uh, one sec. I can fix that. Go with webcam HD device. Yeah, and it sounds it sounds all right. It's definitely like a little more echoey, but like it's not coming out. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I have a whole. St- I have a fairly sizable Steam library. All right. So. Oh, uh, I'll send my friend code. Cool. Because my name on Steam is Bug. Yeah. Like that's not gonna. You're not gonna. Uh, I don't, there's probably a lot. Um, as far as uh, possessions that our characters have, can we have like a 
a like a uh, a knife or a weapon that would be useful in combat or I definitely don't see a reason why you couldn't have a knife the, the gun that Steven has I, I I am I am curious is that how does that work like how do I how do we decide if you can have a gun or not right. is that something that you got through like some sort of rules thing or do you just decide you no, I, I, it's it's, just... it, it's weird. It says put any possessions that your character would have in the shield. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Let me look. I'm I'm, I'm, uh, I'm looking in the quick start rules right now. Um, because I know the beginning of the haunting doesn't say anything about what kind of uh, equipment you should have. Because uh, I know some, obviously, some adventures will say like it is expected that player characters will be more or less unarmed or something. Okay, I mean, I can leave it in my suitcase or in the glove box or something right. like that. <clears throat> uh, well, right, you probably don't have it on your hip anyway. Right. I mean, I'm I'm considering it to be more of an heirloom from my departed parents, fathers specifically. So I figure if I well, if I, I put mean, any like nostalgic value to it, I'd probably leave it somewhere instead of okay. taking it with me all the time. Right. Yeah. Maybe when you're like researching in the library, you don't take it, but when you're actually yeah. and 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 if nothing else, it's an old gun. Fun with that. If I really don't want you to have a gun, mm -hmm. there, there, there's things that can happen to old guns. Uh, but no, I, I think it'll probably be okay. Right. But I'll, I'll just look up. Huh. How would I search? <laughs> so much trouble focusing. I totally forgot what I was doing. Uh, I'm, I'm looking. Oh. There we go. Ah, I see you. Woot. Took me a minute. Mm -hmm. It's like a weirdly small section, isn't it? Creating an investigator. Skills. Credit rating. Alright, so it seems like Steven is baseline wealthy. Mm -hmm. Like the, you know, just barely qualifies as wealthy, which feels right. Like you're like kind of in high society, but like you don't necessarily feel like you belong. Is that fair? Yeah, that would make say? sense. Yes. Alright. Maybe you're living slightly above your means, or perhaps you're living below your means, or you're whatever, I don't know. Um, but then April 4th is like a little bit is April 4th like fairly stable in terms of like income and like uh, yeah standing? he's he's not he's not poor but he's definitely not yeah. rich um, yeah I mean his, his credit rating certainly reflects that yeah, um, yeah. But like uh, like it seems like Steven has a higher credit rating, but like maybe there's a little bit more insecurity there, possibly. That makes sense. Uh, uh, 
is there equipment in this set? No, I'm out of character creation. Game system. Uh, I'll just Google Call of Cthulhu starting equipment. People are okay. This is yeah. This feels right for Call of Cthulhu. Everyone's just saying like, "Eh, just whatever, man." <laughs> I don't know. If it feels right, go for it. So I'm gonna say, "Old Gun is a okay." All right. <laughs> um. Are you are you attached to the specific kind of gun? Is that is that like no. something that really speaks to you? No, not necessarily. Okay. If it's a Winchester, it's a Winchester. If it's a something a little bit less, um, with like a little bit less. What's the what's the gun word for output? Right, like the, the you know um, durability. No, uh, firepower like. Can't shoot six times before you reload. Oh, capacity, you know? or something. Capacity, yeah. You know, I'm just thinking like like because uh, they talk about high capacity magazines for the the, yeah. the newer ones, or something like that. Well, actually, no. A six shooter is kind of fun because like maybe you keep bullets in it, or maybe you keep. I don't know. Well, that's not very smart, is it? I guess. <laughs> Probably not supposed to. Are you? Well, no, that's fun because then you can like actually keep track of the bullets. And there's like six of them or something. Mm. That's fun. I kind of like that. It's dramatic. I guess a revolver is a very dramatic gun, like cinematically. Right. Because you it can is. see what's in it. Yes. True. All right, no, 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 no. I actually never mind. I, I'm flipping. I want it to be. <laughs> did you did you like look up a specific kind of gun, or did you use no, I just revolver? I just picked it up from the back right. of my head. I'm looking at uh, old Russian revolver. Is oh. that where you, where, who, did, who did you get it from? I got it from my 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 non-Russian father. Oh, okay, okay. The one of one of the Delaney's. Uh, so maybe he, name that would have been in, in were there were there revolvers in the Great War? Did he serve in the Great War? Uh, oh man! Is that how so he died? So nostalgic for that. Yeah. Yeah, the revolvers were back in the American Civil War. So, okay. all right. Ooh. All right. Well, the first thing that shows up when I search "Great War Revolver," I guess I should have searched First World War Revolver." I'm, now I'm getting two in this zone. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm looking at like infantry weapons. The first thing that shows up is Webley Revolver. Uh, you don't need to actually figure out this, which is just something to call it. Yeah. Uh, that like, and just like know how many bullets it. World War One was from I 1914 never... to 1918. No, that wouldn't be. Correct. I never played any. I ne I didn't. I didn't. You know. I ne never really played the types of shooters where you had to know what kind of gun you're using. <laughs> the like TF2, where it's just like shotgun, flamethrower. Right. Not any more specific than that. So I'm always uh, a deer in the headlights when I'm playing something. Like, oh. I mean, even fucking Fortnite. 
the guns are like oh. so specific for me. I can't. I, I, I lost. It's just so many numbers. Oh, cool. Okay, we'll call it a cult. Uh, I just found oh. Civil War, um, Civil War sidearms <laughs> on Wikipedia, <laughs> and based on his current Colt day... Army model eighteen sixty. Yeah, something like that. I'm, I'm just googling it to see what it looks like, see what it holds. Is it a six? Is it a six shooter? It's a four. 40, it's a forty-four. Cap and ball. Okay. Oh, okay. So you load like one. So it's not a revolver, or it is a revolver. It does say revolver. Tell. Okay, I can't tell looking at it because it's very compact. All right. Oh. Six shot revolver. Sing, single action revolver. Six shot. Okay. Single action though. What's that mean? Um. Uh, <laughs> see, this is a kind of possibly important because. Might be to begin, you know. Oh, okay. No, it's not important. It's like oh, it means you have to pull the hammer back with your thumb, okay, well, and then fine. and then pull the trigger to fire it. It's not one where you pull the trigger and it also levers the hammer back and releases it at the same gotcha. with the same movement. Well, that's fine. All right. <laughs> You like Indiana Jones style, keep it in your suitcase with the bullets out of it? Yeah. Well, I don't actually know that Indiana I assume Indiana Jones did that because he's <laughs> I would hope so. somewhat responsible. And he does survive all four. He does survive all three movies, so. <laughs> cool. He's like, he drops his suitcase at the airport. All right, back to the character sheet because edit. Yeah, I, I mean, for so it, it does seem like for personal items, it's just whatever you feel is appropriate and isn't crazy. Um, which, again, old gun, not crazy. Like, I'm not gonna. I'm also not gonna make it like. It fucking explodes the first time you use it. Right. I might just slightly up the misfire rate if that's a thing. I don't really know how guns work yet, but <laughs> ammunition might be more expensive, which is why you maybe don't have that much of it. All right. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure if I could add anything else. I'm um, as far as possessions go, anyway. Um, you you certainly could, but like you know, if you can think of something, you don't need to. Right. Like, I'm going as detailed as, like, do I need to go as far as how many shirts? <laughs> the hat or <laughs> something like Absolutely that. Absolutely not. That, that is uh, purely, like... I only bought two pairs of socks. <laughs> and we had to ford this river, and I don't have any more socks. <laughs> so I, now I'm running around with just my bare feet in my shoes. Now, it would be worth it to specify, like, what you travel with like you just travel with a suitcase right um i don't know what people like <gasps> travel with domestically in 1920 uh um, like, i have an image in my head of a businessman 
on a train with a kind of large-ish suitcase, but nothing else. Risk of spoilers. For to the uh -huh. ri for the risk of spoilers, would it be worth it for me to bring a film camera, like a uh, film, a film, film? Like, like a film, film video, camera? like a video camera, like the crank kind? Uh, up to you. I mean, if you think that that's something that you would have, I will say Aberforth probably has one. Yes, I've, I've added a, a a small hand camera to my uh, equipment. Then I don't I... think Aberforth would actually carry around his archaeology mm -hmm. equipment, though. So. Oh, sure, sure. Like, yeah, I don't it's imagine. Not in Boston. <laughs> We're not quite but, uh, to the 1990s where National Treasure was of interest. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, I would say between now and whenever we actually end up playing, a little homework for Aberforth is figure out where, like, if there's an area of specialization for, like, your archaeology in a place that you've traveled to a lot, maybe research, like, a little bit into that if you can. I'll try to do the same. Sure. I'll I forget, but, um, you know, especially if there's high conflict areas, if it is Egypt, like, you wouldn't know ancient Egyptian because people didn't know how to speak it back, right? This is pre um, Rosetta Stone, right? Uh, but um, you might know Arabic, or at least a little bit of it. Okay. If if it's Egypt, you know, mm -hmm. um, but like if there's a specific place that you frequent, you might you might think of, you might think about reallocating a skill to language other. And that specific one, not you know, you don't need to be like super proficient in it. It might just be like two words. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know that you necessarily need a specialization in terms of archaeology. I don't really know how that works. Um, if yeah, it's a I really was... like marginalized group, maybe you didn't learn their language at all. You know, maybe maybe you didn't learn Algonquin, or whatever. <laughs> Um, you just like, you know, maybe you've never talked, <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe you never talked to any of the locals. You just went mm. there and dug shit up. Uh, that's, that's up to you. Okay. But I imagine if, if it is like a high conflict kind of cut through competitive, which you kind of made it sound like it was, mm. um, you probably do know a little bit of whatever language you, if you frequent somewhere specific. Okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense. So um, dealing with multiple dealers, some local, some not. Mm -hmm. I'm not 100% sure the, the mechanical in-game difference between the anthropology skill and the archaeology skill. Um, I'm not sure either. Is there like a a, a kind of like a, a cheat sheet of what um, each skill areas. covers? Not, probably not in the seventh edition Quick Start Rules, but like you could probably just Google it. Okay. I'll Google it too. But I'm curious. Good thing to have. Um, I was wondering, do you actually have uh, copies of the Master Dungeon Master's Guide or whatever? I do. You do. Okay. I do. I haven't really looked at it. But All right, because I, I was like, twenty-three dollars, thirty dollars. Holy cow! So mm. I'm like, ah, do we need to chip in and help you out with that? Uh, if I end up running this system more, like I, I guess so. It's not like you're gonna have to pay. I'm not gonna make you pay like a third of it each, but like that would be that would be nice. Um, but, but not yet. We don't need to worry about that. Okay. The whole point of running this adventure is that all, like all of it's free, mm -hmm. uh, including the quick start rules. So right, don't worry about that. All right. Yeah, I actually went on Amazon and found the paper books, and I'm like, oh damn, that's more like 120 bucks for all of them. Found a good. Oh, and you said, did we send the same link? We did yep, we did. Uh, cool. <laughs> uh, 
enables you anthropology enables you to identify and understand the individual's way of life from his behavior. If the skill user observes another culture, oh, okay, wait. Uh, so they make simple predictions about the culture and the way. I'm... So is anthropology more social? It is, and that's how I always thought of it yeah. too. Was anthropology yeah. is the study of people groups, whereas archaeology is the study of like <laughs> buried uh -huh, ruins right. and stuff. So, like in ter in like CSI terms, anthropology is oh shit! I actually don't know where I was going with this. Like behavior. <laughs> sure, the the, the uh, behavioral specialist and the archaeologist is like the tech uh, uh, dork in the basement that that like is clearly a different, like always filmed on a different day because it's like the the person who works in the tech lab never appears mm -hmm. in any other scenes and only the chief goes to the tech lab. <laughs> I guess I'm more thinking. Uh, NCIS. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she appears in other scenes. I can't remember. Well, now you're making me think of um, what was that cop show? Oh, Lucifer. Where they've mm, got the yeah, the, the nerdy, the cute nerdy girl who works in the <laughs> in the in the laboratory. <coughs> Yeah, I figure that archaeologist is the guy that's always dusting off the rocks and taking yes. the and transcribing all the little cuneiform right. carvings. So archaeology would would help you identify an artifact. Anthropology would help you identify a custom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you could have so like worth having both if if you're an archaeologist. Oh, for like, sure. Especially if especially for Aberforth. I imagine you would have some experience with anthropology as well, right? Yeah, I think so. Maybe, maybe you know, Stephen I could see being much more on the archaeology side. Mm. Um, I could too, actually. Even not that, not that you're entirely lacking, because you, you, you're you're fairly, you're still pretty worldly, right? It seems like. But um, even if I had not picked archaeology as a skill, I could still see his his. Mm -hmm just demeanor of library nerd constantly just going through research and looking at like microfiche and stuff like that as being yeah more of an archaeologist's demeanor and mannerisms mm -hmm. and plus Barbara is at the library and he has a thing for Barbara and you guys can like there's nothing wrong with if you if you guys want to try to it, it on the one hand there's nothing wrong with having the same like doubling up on a skill like like both of you having you know, half of your skills in common, that's, like, not a problem. Okay. Because you may split up, you know? And this game is, is very... It's both very teamwork-heavy and very individualist. But also, I would not be mad at you guys for, like, looking at each other's skills and talking about, like, min-maxing. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's kind of what, what, what we did. Truly, uh, whichever one seems more fun to you guys. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it's going to help you either way. Um, right. Whichever one seems more fun to you guys. Yeah, well, we already kind of did the min-maxing as far as, like, driving cars. <laughs> Sean made the suggestion, mm -hmm. eh, if you wanted to, like, take drive auto as a bonus skill or a hobby yeah, yeah. instead of, like, a professional skill. I'm like, eh, actually, that makes sense. That's cool. yeah. Of course. That's and we, we did have a little bit more overlap than we do now. I... I think I originally had history and archaeology, um, but I saw that uh, Stephen also had history and I was looking at some some of the skills that you that you yeah don't have do not have in common. It does seem like 
you're a bit more active and he's a bit more bookish. Fun. I like it. Yeah. Who, who says this isn't a class-based system? <laughs> Do we both have history now? No. Oh, okay. No, I... Just, just, just. Steam. Okay. All right. Oh, I wrote it. I wrote the V. Why did I do that? My dad's. Who's Who's Stephen with a V? Is that Is that real? Do people spell it that way, or did I just make that up now? I think you just made that up. It's been Stefan so far. Also, I was wondering who uh, Aberforth Junior is. (laughs) That was that was the spare sheet that I was just editing to see if I could get the the verses to appear, but I never succeeded. All right, all right. (laughs) So weird. It is. I mean, I can I can manually create the the verses role by editing the. by going in and adding attributes, but I don't want to go in and do all. No. Yeah, that is weird. Oh yeah, let me look at your power. I've only been looking at the basic uh, attributes. So, the weird shit. You guys are not lucky. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> nope. <laughs> I blame that on my dice roll two weeks ago. <laughs> Aberforth spent all his luck. Uh, yeah, I, on the I, black I, market with his. I, I blame that on. Talk. Yeah, I I, I kind of blame that, that on like Aberforth going into all these ruins and like. Triggering, stealing, stealing tri- around. triggering like supernatural curses and stuff and like just randomly like dodging out of the way in time. That's fun. So he just like triumphs through mm-hmm. all these curses and doesn't <laughs> realize it. Yeah, yeah. That's fun. Uh-huh. <laughs> And and Stephen is like a savant, look at that, eighty intelligence, seventy education. <laughs> no wonder, no wonder this guy made it in the prestigious what is it, University of Chicago? Yeah, there we go. Yep. Wait, that's a good roll. <laughs> well, it's a good roll now, but if that was the roll I used to determine what my starting luck is. Oh, God. Wait. <laughs> when you roll luck, do you just roll a percentile? Uh, I actually don't remember. Um, 3d6 times 5. Okay, because oh, okay. I was going to say, if, if you just roll 2d10, the stakes are so high. Because you could roll three, a 1, two, four. 2, 2. Yeah, I could have used, wow. I could have used the. Or ninety. I just rolled a nine, for the three d six, times five. You said. So I would have gotten forty five instead of thirty. Hmm. But yeah, even then, it's like three d six times five. Yeah. That's a maximum <laughs> of sixty. I think, is that right? Okay. Okay. So so thirty is not horrible. 30's alright. It's low, but it's not. Um, yeah. 25's pretty bad, I think. But like, No, 90. 90 is maximum, sorry. Oh, okay, never mind. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully you won't need it. Uh, right, yeah. Except... <clears throat> Yeah. 
Ab- Aberforth is a brick wall. He doesn't need luck. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if this is really just a one shot, I am thinking of adding an asterisk because I want to use. I really love. I really, really love. Even for a one shot, I love the alternate rule of being able to spend luck points one to one to raise a roll. Ooh, Ooh. man! I might, I might add a an asterisk there that like you can only do it once per session. You know. Sure. <clears throat> for this, just for this one shot. Okay. Yeah. So if we do end up somehow like like you know, oops, I made it long. I do have a habit of doing that because like against the call of the reptile of goddess, we'll do like three or four sessions. Uh, oops. Um, but uh, you know, if we do that that way, like if we do go end up going two sessions, it's like oh well, you know. You get two uses of it, um, but probably just one. This, this will probably just be one session. Right, and there's no banking those kinds of things either, like rolling them over for the next session. If we do, if we ended up um, <clears throat> uh, if we ended up continuing to use the characters for something else. Um, which I'm not opposed to, although, you know, it's somewhat up to you guys, but, you know, I used to say that. It's up to me. <laughs> I can, if, 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 if I want you guys to make new characters, I, I shouldn't be uh, afraid to ask you guys to do that. Sure. But, um, yeah, I, I, I honestly don't know if I would prefer for, like, you know, I know there's a couple of adventures that people like to run this one yeah i mean this is the classic starting point sure so i mean i was like if we kept going it's like damn i i could see making another character as like the standard police investigator yeah the detective or Mm -hmm. and and it's almost like it's it's almost kind of i don't know if i as a player, if I would want to use a character in this game, mm-hmm. if they survived, I'd be like, well, didn't they win? Didn't they get out? Mm-hmm. No, there's, there's, you know, let's kill them this game because yeah. they survived the last one. But that's that's just that's just. Uh, I mean, I mean, the the Call of Cthulhu characters they never really survive. Even the no. even just the narrators always end up like jumping off a building or committing suicide or something. Uh, There's a heavy entropy on your character, Susie. You don't, you don't get stronger over time. You get weaker. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you also get strong. But, um. Now, I like the idea that the term, the, the city of Gotham keeps floating around the quick start guide. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, so what if we were to refer to everybody as DC Comics characters <laughs> where <laughs> yeah. where yeah. when they go insane they actually go to you know that insane mm-hmm. asylum that I can't remember the name of Arkham? Yes, Arkham Asylum. They go to Arkham Asylum and get to hang out with all the mm-hmm. super villains and stuff. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, oh, if I'm not mistaken, that is why it's called Arkham Asylum. I think right? so. Yeah. Is, is yeah. because of Lovecraft. Huh. And shoot, if your character doesn't die but instead gets sent to Arkham, you can recycle your character, but they have to have been rehabilitated. Mm-hmm. I could see that being maybe an ongoing yeah. option. Or like fell in a vat or something. Yeah. In his green. I, I, I someone was telling a joke about how like every superhero should should just have fallen in a vat of whatever their power is. <laughs> so, like Spider Man fell in a vat of spiders, Wolverine fell in a vat of Wolverines. <laughs> uh, yeah, etc. Iron Man fell in a vat of molten iron, I guess. Huh. <laughs> 
It's like Terminator Makes 2. Makes sense. There were funnier uh, <laughs> things, but I can't remember. <laughs> Indiana Jones falls in a vat of Indians? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, now the one thing I don't know is electrical repair. I haven't explained that one as far as Steven goes. Electrical repair, yeah. yeah. It was one of those so hobby cool. skills. I just added 25 to it and okay. said, hey, this looks interesting. Nothing wrong with that. Same with psychology. Both of those are kind of off the wall, mm -hmm. not sure about it sort of things. Yeah, yeah. Swimming I could see just because as children, Aberforth and Stephen often jumped in the lake. <laughs> and of course, being the competitive mm -hmm. types, they always pitted each other against like racing to the other side of... <laughs> Electrical repair is different <laughs> in 1920. True. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm just trying to think what electric, electrical repair looks like. It enables the investigator to repair or reconfigure equipment such as auto ignitions, electric motors, fuse boxes, burglar alarms. Oh. Okay. You know, you so you 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 don't you don't just know how to drive. You like know your way around a car. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Which I guess, like, in 1920, cars kind of suck, so you might need to know how to All fix right. People. I'm kind of scared at how slowly healing is in... Oh, God. It's so much different. <laughs> yeah, the mindset is totally different. Yeah. I don't even know how to process it, but, like, yeah, getting hurt is scary. Wow. Okay. Uh, not I was, that. I was, I was walking through the uh, the alone through the flames uh, module, <laughs> and I, I couldn't believe how how deadly stuff can be. Like, yeah, yeah one of one, well, it's one hit point per day, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Dang. Uh... Yeah, as if, soon as we finish like every uh, week, if you get medical attention, you get the chance to like heal more. Right, one d three something. <laughs> yeah, instead of, wow. instead of one. <laughs> so ten instead of seven. Hmm. Which out of? Okay, these electronics don't actually look tuned, but this just looks like the breaker that I had in my home. I'm looking at, like, 1920s home electronics. Mm. Yeah, no, I totally see... Yeah, that, that there's no... Yeah, ab absolutely perfectly fine electrical, like having a little bit of electrical repair. You're just, you're just a, a bit handy. Mm-hmm. You don't need you don't need a whole backstory for that, right? Maybe with my other hobby of drive auto, yeah. it's a matter like of Russian. Russian, I need a reason mm -hmm. for sure. that. Sure, sure. Electrical repair. Now that I've like looked it up a little bit, totally. Like, yeah, that's and maybe that gives me the ability to pull the igniter out of the Model A rental. Yeah. And throw the yeah. ends in the lake and just zap everything in there. Watch the Leviathan float to the surface. <laughs> or whatever it is.
Maybe you have like an old radio in your house that you keep keep the, you've like fixed it a couple of times. Sure. Maybe you had to have it fixed once and it felt like a betrayal. Maybe I know how to make a transmitter and like <coughs> or jury rig a transmitter to actually Maybe. pick up other frequencies and Ooh. Yeah. It looks like you it looks oh, you've got like what twenty five in electrical repair? What is it again? Uh yeah. It's it's a plus twenty okay. to the base, so Okay. So that that's 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 like low but but like no it's not that low. I mean it's twenty five. It's twenty five percent. Yeah. So like if you attempt to fix something, you have a twenty five percent chance of, of doing it. Like sure. I, I, that is kinda that is a really straight I guess man. I'm the percentages are really growing on me because that that <laughs> that does really put it in perspective of like well, how good are you at getting into a fight? Well, I have a twenty percent, five percent chance of uh, not getting my ass beat. So <laughs> there, there you go. That's my that's my brawl skill. Yep. Uh, it, it totally like as anti-intuitive as um, probability and percentages are to the human brain. Like, like this is working for me. Are rental cars a big thing in 1920? I think a personal car would be very rare. Um, yes. At the same time, I was just reading that Obsidian Portal site and saw the skill Fast Talk, which... That, which, I was thinking, sounds almost like an Aberfield skill, but it's not essential. It's it's like a charisma roll, it says. Yeah. Which is like their examples without reflecting the target just signs the paper or allows the trespass or lends the automobile or whatever else. I, I, I also like, though, if he has a low fast talk because it does seem like he's a bit of a thrill seeker. Mm -hmm. And, like, I could see him, like, being really excited. I mean, I don't know the character yet, but, like, maybe I'm just uh, imagining things. I could possibly see him, like, getting excited, being being like very nervous and excited about talking to this uh, 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 artifact smuggler or whatever, uh, and like doing an okay job, <laughs> and then being like, <laughs> that was that was a bit too exciting for today, but I don't know. Yeah, but like you were put in, you know, like you knew who you were going to, like, you did the research, you found the contact, or, you know, you had a broker or whatever, so, like, it, it was less high stakes because you did the research, so, like, maybe your, your low, fast talk is made up for by the fact that you know how to do the research and stuff. Um, so, fast talk is not essential for uh, um, illicit dealing. Yep. It's, yeah, just, it's, for, just, it's just important if the cops show up unexpectedly. Right. Um, I know for Aberforth, I was kind of debating between the fast talk, uh, charm, and persuade, mm -hmm. and... Oh, I missed persuade. Uh, yeah, yeah pers I the... I, I was reading somewhere that the the time scale is really the 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 thing to think of when you're doing think fast talk charm mm, and persuade, persuade is like a longer term. Right. Yeah. Persuade happens the the role for persuade happens over like like an half hour or an hour mm -hmm. or you have to hours. Make an argument to persuade, right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah. And then fast talk is just kind of overwhelming. Well, fast talk is like reactionary, right? 
I feel like you have to be reacting to something the fast time. Like yeah. If you're, going with a, if you're doing the thing that you planned to do, I don't imagine that would usually be a fast talk role. Yeah, yeah. And then charm is, you know, you're, you're coming at it with an argument, but yeah. you're kind of just using mm. your... It's it's longer it it's a longer duration than fast talk, but it's not as long a duration as the persuade. Okay. And okay. I don't I don't think Aberforth has the personal looks to pull off charm. So All right. no persuade makes sense. You've you've convinced me. I think I get I think at least maybe I'm not getting it the way that everyone gets it, but I feel like I get charm. Uh, persuade and fast talk. It's not like wisdom and intelligence, which baffles me to this. Like, it, I'm just, I am still almost as unsure about wisdom and intelligence that I was the first time I played D&D. <laughs> like, like, in fact, I think I might be more confused by it than I was, because cause originally like, I was very confused between intelligence and wisdom. Then I got an explanation, and it made sense for a while. And I heard a different explanation. And then I heard a different explanation. And then I heard another different explanation. And and then, yeah. My confidence in what is intelligence and what is wisdom eroded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I feel like most of the time um, the intelligence in D&D &D is equivalent to education in Call of Cthulhu. You're just kind of yeah. recalling that doids mm. about the universe um, yeah. versus that's that's definitely the the first explanation I heard, and I feel like that's the safest. Like, that's probably the 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 most solid explanation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You still have things like investigation, which is like not not that <laughs> right. Uh, versus perception, you know, and all that stuff, but it's definitely better than any other explanation. Mm -hmm. All right, what spells do you guys have? <laughs> I wasn't able to come up with any uh, ideas um, or yeah. for spells. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I ran into chapter two before they even mentioned them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's not something that you're gonna have to worry about right now. Maybe, maybe never. You might never have to worry about it. You know, right. From my understanding, the the keeper. Um, I don't think anybody starts with spells necessarily. No, nobody starts. With yeah. Spells. Okay. And that was my understanding. Spell is like you you will lose sanity learning a spell. Right. Uh -huh. uh, you Lovely. might lose more. You might lose less, but you will lose some. Mm -hmm. um, I I did I did learn a spell in um, in the the alone through the flames. Uh, oh, cool! I, I saw that. I, I didn't. I only ran through it once. I meant to go back and run through it again. I did. Like, there is a point towards the end where it says, "Like, if you learned a magic spell, use it now." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wait, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. And I was like, "What the fuck? Where could I have learned a magic spell?" <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah it's uh, it's a doozy. Uh. Okay. I mean, I would think at some point if I were to learn clairvoyance, having grown up in a maybe haunted mansion already, it would be 
believable anyway. But yeah. I don't know if that's even a valid spell. Yeah. I mean, again, w with the sort of philosophy of Call of Cthulhu, <clears throat> which we've, we, we, we talked about it before, we're like, I don't agree with it, but I do find it really interesting and compelling. And like, truly, like, just one of those ideas that is really scary in, in and of itself, <laughs> um, which is that, like, understanding the world is bad. Knowing, truly knowing things is a self-destructive exercise. Right. Uh, the more you see, uh, the less you know for sure, and the less, well, you know. <clears throat> anyway, learning magic is very much, like, on some level, accepting the kind of... Uh, it, it, it's, it's like getting... Yeah. It, I, th I think you, you have to... You have to let go of reality as you yeah, falsely you understand it a you little just, bit. You just want to remain as ignorant as possible, right? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, so that's, yeah, you lose, you lose sanity when you learn a spell. But you roll, you, you do a sanity roll, I think, just to see how much you win. <laughs> And then, like, the first time you cast a spell, it also, like, it can go wrong. Uh, but, then after, but then after that, hmm. well, it probably depends on the spell. And I imagine most of them can, like, a lot of Call of Cthulhu spells, like, can go bad anyway. Right. Some of them are bad. Like, you can learn a spell that's just, like, you instantly die, you know. <laughs> like, why did I learn this? Hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of them are just you summon a monster that will kill you. Lovely. I did. I did briefly scan through the spells in Call of Cthulhu. And it's fucking crazy just how many of them were were obviously self destructive and not helpful at all. Right. <laughs> probably helpful if you're like running from you can call something else for it to chase Looking at the Dungeon World uh, SRD right now, just to see what the dice were. That I... uh. A set of dice. Where? Weird. Because I have this big bowl of dice, but one specific color set is not. Put it in.
Yeah, you talk about the SRD, and I'm like, dang, Call of Cthulhu SRD has nothing, as far as I can uh, tell. Well, that's surprising. I mean, it's like one of the oldest systems. I mean, yeah, but it's I like... Guess, could it just be because most of the stuff is free? Well, I, it, just looking through the Roll20 version of it, it's like, it has five oh, categories, yeah. and you click on any of them, it says nothing. <laughs> well, great. Yeah. I mean, it is, I, th I believe it's the same publisher that originally published it, so maybe that's part of it, it's just like they're all... Right. They, they have their established pipeline, maybe they're a little slower. This... No, but I, I don't know, Call of Duty is like way more... Um, I feel like Call of Duty is way more like mobile. And, mm -hmm reactive and like modern than he is like call of cthulhu is like woke <laughs> i don't know i don't know that i mean despite being built on the back of one of the most uh heinous problematic like authors right uh right <laughs> Camera. A film camera is two eighty five. Uh, a camera with a tripod 35. is thirty bucks. What? Oh I just I looked up Obsidian Portal. Yeah. And I'm just looking through the equipment list. I'm like, oh mm -hmm. okay, that's a that's not bad. Oh. oh, cool. A good hotel is five bucks a night. Oh, okay. Deer stalker hat, forty five cents. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> I could sell my father's pistol for $20. <laughs> That's a country song. <laughs> Electro medical battery. Huh. What the fuck? Under medical equipment, I have no idea what it is. <laughs> my 45 a box of 45 ammunition is three dollars uh-huh that's what I need a full toupee for fifteen dollars uh. yes yeah, so do you think you you probably travel with like Oh man, how much can you fit in? Like, a, what are, what are like case sizes? Because I, I'm hoping there's like a little case, like this little dice case I'm holding, mm -hmm. uh, where you can have like six bullets in it. But that seems weird, doesn't it? Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if if he's a professor, he's not really a professional well, yeah, you're not gunslinger. Yeah, you're not carrying a chain of, of bullets. Yeah. yeah. Vietnam. 
I'm going to be carrying nine yards of. Uh, a, s a semester of college. One ninety dollars. Uh, wow. See, the equipment page here is also saying roll a d10 to figure out what your annual income is. I'm like, I just rolled a 10. So according to this, I'm making 10 grand a year. <laughs> but uh, it doesn't match his stuff that I've already figured out. So, Do you think, is it, it, would it be normal for there to be like a case that would have six bullets in it? There's a scene in, um, in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Have you guys seen Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Yeah, it's been a while. A long, long time yeah, ago. Do you remember when he gets out the gun and there's like, the bullets are like, alive, and they talk? Oh, uh, no. With I accents? Mm. Okay. okay. I feel like he takes it out of a case that has a space for the gun and for six bullets. Okay. Pretty sure. Hold on, I have a movie here. Let me, let me, let me just, I'm going to open up the movie and go to, the, <laughs> go to that. When is that set? It's not the 1920s, right? It is a noir. All right. It's like, it's like, it's, it's like a 60s or something, right? Uh, 60s? I, 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 I correlate 60s no, with like Andy earlier. Griffith and stuff. Okay, I'm, I'm super bad at time. Maybe it's 1940s. Very, yeah. If I think like... Very, yeah. Yeah. It's White. very intimidating for me to be playing a game set in the real world in historical times. So bad at this. I, th I think so of bad. I think of Roger Rabbit as more like 1940s, post World War II. Yeah, that makes up, that makes way more sense. I don't know what I was thinking. 1960 is like set in 1947. Brokeback Mountain is set in, in 1960. Oh, there you go. 47. 1947. Oh, yeah, like right in between our two. But closer. Towards the end. I think it's before he goes to Tuned. I saw this movie recently. He's like going to Tune Town. And it's like a big deal for him, so he gets out he gets out his little gun. He's not open. For a while, and he says hello to all the bullets, and they're like, "Hey, long time no see," or whatever. Now that you mention that, I almost, almost. It's been a long time since I saw it, and I didn't really pay attention because, yeah. Okay, it's a fancy. All right, it's a fancy. It's a very, very fancy book. So you probably don't have this because it would be like an army issue gun. All right. Uh, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. No. Oh, right, it's from his friend Yosemite Sam. <laughs> his old buddy. And in the bottom right there, you can see a little gold thing. That's the little thing that flips up, and I'll send the picture. Uh -huh. All the bullets mm -hmm. chilling out, waking up. <clears throat> Definitely not any specific stereotype at all. Totally <laughs> cool and look, nothing wrong here. <laughs> Just some culturally unspecific uh, <laughs> bullets having a nap. <laughs> okay. Uh, he's not a siesta. We're not, it's just a nap. Three year old nap. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, this I yeah, now like, I don't know. very vaguely recall this now. Yeah. I don't know how fancy this box is and how unusual that is. That's something you have at your house. Not in your suitcase. But at least this is a precedent. Mm -hmm. this, this, is, this is a precedent for having six bullets accompanying a revolver in some sort of case. That's enough for me. 
Sure. I mean this this uh, this equipment list that they're talking about does say you buy forty five revolver bullets in a box of a hundred at a time. But oh, okay. but I could see you also might have keeping 45, that. Yeah. You might have forty five at home. Yeah. Like in Chicago. Sure. And you could, if you really wanted to, you could go to the store and buy forty five of them. Oh, I meant I meant a a forty five. Going, if you think you'll need that going to an alleged haunted house. No, I, I, it's not forty five at a time. It's a hundred at a time. It's a box oh. of one hundred bullets for two dollars oh. and ninety eight cents. This is a forty five right. as a gun. Nineteen twenties. Yeah. yeah. Forget. I forget but sometimes. but anyway, yeah. No, I. Yeah, I would say most of them you keep at home, <laughs> and you don't bring with. Your suitcase is just full of bullets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Steven, anything you want to tell me? We're going to a ghost hunt, not a witch hunt. Huh? Yeah. You go to take out a shirt and bullets like tumble out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, I guess I can I guess I can do this dice thing online. It's not as it's not as cool, it's not as like tactile. I guess I could do that. I mean, if the rules are supposed to be hidden from us, it doesn't really matter whether you use physical dice or online dice. Yeah, but it's like I want the I want the colors. I want the you know, like the whole point is like, you know, you're like, oh, I want that big chunky D10. It looks like bones. And it's like, yeah, what, what, what class do you think that fits? Mm. Uh, even if you don't know you're getting a class, I, I feel like on some level it's like, you know, if someone picks the, and I'm probably wrong here, but I feel like on some level if someone picks the really pretty flowery D6 and they get a druid, like, I feel like they're not going to be upset by that. Like, it still feels like a choice on some level because, like, you know, the diamond-shaped, crystal-clear D8 called to them. Hmm. They get to be a rogue. Sure, yeah. Uh, the sparkly, I guess you can't see the sparkles, but the D4 is sparkly and purple. It looks black. It is. Okay, knife. Uh, I, I, don't see, I don't see it in your inventory. I love the look and feel of these Call of Cthulhu character sheets. I just do not love the functionality. No. Uh, I think there is an alternative. I think there is a different... There, there were like two options. Hmm. Um... I could try switching it to the other one, although is that going to reset the sheets or something? Uh, it oh, may, yeah. and I'm kind of worried okay. about that. So let yeah, no, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. Yeah. I mean, worst case, I could just we could just screenshot everything really fast. And... Oh God, no, no. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll leave it as long as there's nothing that's like gonna actually be like a, a super hindrance in the game. Right. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's fine. I'm, I'm just, I'm just overly picky about the functionality, but no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I guess I should have mentioned it when the free weekend was on, but I started playing Deep Rock Galactic. It's uh, very fun. Deep? I mean, it's a little more it's Deep what? Rock Galactic. Huh. Uh, and it's, it's, um, it's one of those multiplayer games that has a really great lobby. Ooh. I really love a good lobby. In like a seamless multiplayer game, oh, where you, where you, you know you wait for people to join or sure, run mm -hmm. around with people you invited, or you, you know, buy upgrades or something. Mm -hmm. And the upgrade is, I mean, the the lobby is just the, the space station, sure, and you're dwarves in space <laughs> uh, on like an alien planet that that, and there's like propaganda posters everywhere that's like, you know. Talking about like how proud uh, the company is, like how proud you are to be a part of the company that that you know, is it. pioneering, <laughs> uh, liberating Hoxies. Sort of the, the sort of like the uh, the propaganda you'd see on the walls of like Portal Two or something. Kind of like that, yeah. Um, I mean, it's like it's it's like. Huh. Like conceptually, like like with the politics of it, it's like somewhere between Avatar the movie and Alien. Okay. Okay. Like, like, like the, you know, basically Avatar is like the humans are going to conk, you, you know, going to this planet for resources and like, oh no, we're the bad guys. <laughs> but a lot more cynical and sarcastic than that, <laughs> and like not fully acknowledging that you're the bad guys, but like you definitely. Um, dig together yeah, or you, dig you, your own grave. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, and yeah, you you're, you're in the lobby and then you hop in the drop pod and it spits you down in, deep into the planet underground, uh, huh. and you just mine for resources while uh, space bugs, waves of space bugs come in every once in a while, uh, huh. try to stop you. Wow. So uh, the best description, the best like it's this meets that description that I've heard is that it's um, Minecraft meets uh, Starship Troopers. Oh. <laughs> I would say that that nails the feeling of the game. Like, there's other cool. comparisons you can make as far as tone and all that, but like more than anything else, it feels like Minecraft because all the surfaces are destructible mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Basically just because all the surfaces are destructible. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing. That's a big thing. Uh, and then it really feels like Starship. More than any other game I've played, it feels like Starship Troopers. <clears throat> and it's, like, almost as cynical. Like, Starship Troopers is Pretty one simple. of them. I have not seen that <laughs> like, one, but okay. It's really good. I found it intensely depressing. But like, yeah, yeah. It's really, it is really good. I don't know if it's, you know, you'll have to find out if it's your thing. It's right. the most... <laughs> it is one of the mo it's it's weird because it, it's very it is very misanthropic like on some level it does feel like it hates humanity but there is a humanity to it that like I can't handle misery in movies that's my biggest mm -hmm. horror hang up I, I'm talking about this um Starship Troopers doesn't bother me in that way because it does feel like the movie cares about these people um, okay but they're also terrible and everything is terrible mm -hmm. uh, hmm. yeah it, it's I believe it's based on a maybe not so subtly I don't know much about the book but like um, I can't remember the director Paul Verhoeven mm -hmm. the director of Starship Troopers describes the book Starship Troopers as I, I think he said it made me bored and depressed <laughs> He's not a fan of Starship Troopers, the book. And it like, the, really shows in the movie. The, the book is one of the only fictional books to ever be put on, like, the the Army or the Navy's uh, reading list. Oh, man. I mean, yeah. Yeah. The, the movie is, like, yeah, very, very much not. does not share the same outlook as the book. There's no It's a really fascinating like movie. Mm -hmm. it, it's also one of those movies where like 
and I don't know, I do not, I think this was intentional because Paul Verhoeven is a maniac. I think, I genuinely think this was intentional that like the entire cast is white and it's the first movie I've ever seen where like that's important. It's not like essential, but like it's, it's the only movie I've ever seen that is saying something with its lack of diversity. I see. Which is fascinating. Huh. <laughs> Not wow. that you could do that now, and maybe you shouldn't do that now, but it is like really fascinating that the yeah. movie is very deliberately saying something by casting all these people with like names like Ramirez or something like like people from uh, Central America with Hispanic last names, but they're all white, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like very very much saying something with that. Uh, it's it's such a fascinating movie. I don't know if you've seen have you seen RoboCop? Uh, um, I don't know. Uh, what's the what's the um, the Mars movie with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger? Um, Total Recall. That sounds right. Okay, I haven't seen that one. Yes, that is that is. I've watched through the first maybe hour of that one. That's one okay. I still haven't finished, but I mean to. I'm just trying to think point. of Paul Verhoeven movies because he is a very. I haven't seen very many Paul Verhoeven movies, but as I understand it, he can be like a bit of an acquired taste because he's yeah. like yeah. misanthropic, very violent, gory. Yep. Um, <clears throat> I'm really mixed on whether I should watch Robocop or not because it seems <laughs> like more of the stuff that I there are things in Star Trek Troopers that bother me but like it still it coasts by as like a success for me uh -huh. uh, Robocop might be too depressing uh and Total Recall might be too much of the opposite. Like Total Recall, might... no, to Total Recall is pretty heady. I think. Uh. Shouldn't I shouldn't be on calls with this time? And of course, Amazon Prime doesn't I, have I, it for free. <laughs> I feel fine, but mm -hmm. I'm going on. Uh, Anything actually, else we need to talk about as far as yeah, I don't, characters? I don't have anything right now, no. I'll, I'll try to come back and finish my notes uh, when I'm a little more focused. Okay. Uh, and I'll probably have questions then. Uh, All right. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, look, yeah, yeah. Think about where think about where April Fourth has gone, and like if he has any sort of cultural specializations there, and like what kind of language skills might go with that, if any. Um, okay. Same with Stephen, mm -hmm. uh, although if he is more of the archivist than. Yeah, it, it I seems like less, yeah. less like you have the specializations necessarily. Sure, although um, I would expect you, you him to have traveled could... at least somewhat. Yeah, it, it, you know, you you guys could coordinate um, on that, or you could have separate specializations. Like, okay, it doesn't necessarily you don't necessarily have to have met doing Egypt stuff or right whatever. Uh, Call of Cthulhu Reddit. I'm trying to think oh, if I'm trying to think if I have any homework for Delaney. <laughs> Probably not. <coughs> Maybe I'll think. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, what are you? How old are you? I am thirty-five. He is thirty-five. All right.
right, I'm gonna go. All right, oh, okay. sounds good. <coughs> oh, mm-hmm. uh, pick a pick a die. Like as in? No, actually, you know what? Never mind. Because uh, I might want to do. I might want to actually do that <laughs> at some point. <laughs> okay. And you already know. Nice. All right, which is actually okay. Um, <laughs> in fact, I I did plan on running doing that more than once with like the same people and like i was okay with them recognizing the dice because then they could be like well i don't want to play a wizard again uh, or they could be like "Ooh, yeah last time we played uh you know th- this guy got the barbarian mm-hmm. and that seemed like a lot of fun so i'm going to take the die that he did i see so 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 i am i am okay with people right uh, all right. Goodbye. Okay. Take care. See ya.